Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where we have a financial report in two days. That said, the Clinton Centurion are both going to be done in one day. We could deploy and just leave the Spectre at home. Hmm. We may want to do that. Never mind. The only Steiner mission available is a defend base. We're just going to go ahead and take forward. Okay. I'll pass on that defend base, thank you very much. So we'll just tick forward and get our financial report here. And we had a lot of mech warriors fatigued anyway, so I, I think we could have pulled it off. I just didn't feel like it. I rarely feel like doing a, uh, doing a defend base, if I'm honest. But we can go ahead and continue here for three more days. There we go. Now, we're a little low on funds, but let's see what we've got in the command center. Actually, before we do that, let's go through and make sure that we don't need to do any promos. Now, I was informed that apparently promoing while the pilot is fatigued can potentially cause issues, so we are going to not do that. Mallard, on the other hand, we could specialize him. How do we want to specialize him? Let's see, we've already got one, two tactics pilots. We've only got the one tactics mech. We've got three juggernaut pilots. Fair enough. I think we've got two on evasive. I think we should make him be an escapist here. There we go. Excellent. Now let's continue going through these. Those are all irrelevant. Okay. Let's double check our mech bay, make sure that nothing is just horribly off. Yeah, this looks correct. Excellent. Okay. Let's see what we've got available for missions. This is a half skull battle mission. Normally, I would absolutely be going down more towards this skull and a half one. We're after vehicles. But maybe we should do this more risky one right now. And then we can fall back on these slightly simpler ones if we need a milk run later on. I think that's okay. This is not a double, but this is still plenty of payment, I think. This is how much? About 200k for a priority salvage. I think we're going to leave it right down the middle, honestly. Two priority salvage is going to suck. There's no doubt about that. We'll put our Centurion here and our Assassin here. We're going to need to move these around. Oh, that's right. We can deploy seven mechs and two vehicles at this time. Okay. Well, we don't have seven mechs currently. We might get them from this. So let's put our Clint here and our Spectre here. And then over here, we'll put in our Panther and our Trebuchet. So we're going to deploy six mechs here. We'll put Spectre or rather, Adrenaline in the Spectre. And then we'll put, say, Hotspur in the Trebuchet. And then, I think, Viringian in the Panther. It's not necessarily ideal, but it'll do. We'll put Sketchy in the Assassin. We'll put Mallard in... I don't want to put him in the Clint. I really don't. I want to put him in the Centurion. And then we'll put ourselves in the Clint, even though we're fatigued. Okay, let's do this. This is a battle in the Highlands, skull and a half difficulty. We are hoping to run into some halfway decent vehicles out here. Although odds are, I think, a little low, we're probably going to be running into medium mechs. Like a mix of light and mediums, potentially. However, hopefully, it's a mix of medium mechs and ideally, it would be a mix of medium mechs and, like, heavy tanks. That would be preferable. Salvage-wise. That said, we only have two priority salvage, so we're going to have to keep that in mind. But if we run into an Ostwar or a Grasshopper, we're both only one part away from those. And we did find out that we can convert over parts from a different variant, so that's great. For now, though, we need to destroy enemy units. A lance of pirate battle mechs has been rampaging in Lyran territory on Epsilon Eridani. 
They've been raising population centers, burning fields and refineries, looting storage facilities. They're clearly doing everything they can think of to drive our people out. This is terrorism. Pure and simple. We need you to find them and destroy them. No escape and no prisoners. Not much to say, Commander. Shoot to kill. It's allegedly only one lance, but uh, this is Darius's intel we're talking about, so it's probably like six lances. This is going to be a stand-up fight, huh? I don't believe you. Whoa, okay. Apparently that new patch has brought back the lag in the recording. Okay, I will try to avoid as much lag as possible. It looks like it's primarily happening when uh, the camera is moving or it's most noticeable there anyway now this this is laggy no matter what this actual deploy here but we can use the forest to our advantage. good thing it's a turn-based game that is all okay so there's an enemy turn going on we don't oh we do have allies we have a scimitar we have a harasser we have a saladin and a vedette Okay. Uh, lance of vehicles over there is fine. We'll just move up, see if we can detect anything. We do detect things. There are multiple things being detected over there. Okay. We're just going to move up all the way over to here. And we'll take a look at what these are. We see a cattle master and a stinger, and something keeps flashing up here. And I think that there is something back behind as well. These are pirates, so we expect a lance of four. And it is our specter that moves first. We are going to sprint our specter down over here as a scout. Confirmed. Okay, we see a Jenner and an urban mech over here. That is fine. This is not skull and a half difficulty, if you ask me. Well, I mean, it's within the difficulty variance, but... This is not particularly threatening. We'll fire on the Irby. I doubt we'll get too much. That was just a pot shot. Yep. The Clint can be on long range targeting for now. We'll step up. We have 10 rounds of AC-10 ammo. I don't think it's worth firing. The Stinger moves up. Fires on the Spectre, does two damage. Fine. Okay. The Assassin does have jump jets, so we're just going to step up over here. And I think we're going to look to tag possibly this Jenner. Okay, we'll also tickle the Jenner a little bit. That's the Assassin's job. Tag and tickle. Oh nice, a headshot. I think the tag headshot them actually, which is vaguely hilarious. We'll move up with the Senshi. And we will go ahead and fire on that Jenner that we have tagged now. We can't hit the SRM-6 from here, but that's okay. Okay, we hit one of those large lasers. We'll take that. I live to serve. The Panther can go ahead and move up to here. I think this is just fine. And we'll fire on the Cattle Master. Maybe we stray shot. Oh, we actually hit. We'll take it. That Cattle Master is running some form of stealth. Just now noticed that. Okay. Yes, Noted. I want to position the trebuchet somewhere like here. So we have a direct LOS on that Jenner. Okay. Hip destruction. We'll take it. That seems absolutely fine. The harasser moves up and does nothing. The cattle master moves up. Fires a lot, but mostly doesn't hit. Okay. It's acceptable. The vedette does nothing. We expect that. The irby fires on the specter. Misses. We expect that as well. Saladin, not going to do anything. Scimitar, not going to do anything. These are all direct fire vehicles. They are extremely unlikely to do anything while sitting behind a mountain. <laughs> so uh, we expect very little from them. That Jenner, however, it just positioned in a very interesting position to me. Ready for order. 
Let's take the Centurion down over here, and this will expose the Centurion. But we accept this. The Centurion is kind of acting as bait right now. If they attack the Centurion, that is good. We're going to fire on the Jenner. This is side arc, and this is strong side, but that's okay. Apparently, I'm going to punch my microphone. Well, at least something's getting punched, because it's sure not that Jenner. <laughs> Okay, the Clint is going to come around this direction. Out. The Clint may also be an interesting target for the enemies. But we're going to fire on that Jenner. And we're still on long range targeting, and that's ideal. Attacking from position. Okay, we really failed. I'm not too shocked. I missed. Yep, that's what happens. The harasser moves up, does Commander. nothing. We are going to... Hmm. Okay. This is less ideal than I had hoped. Oh. I'm a moron. We can just walk around this cliff. Like, we can literally walk in over here and kick the Jenner on the weak side. <laughs> For some reason, I thought that the cliff kept going this way and we had to jump. But no, no, that is not how that works. Okay, let's get in there. Okay, we missed the melee attack. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Some damage into that leg. We'll take that. That's gonna hurt. That cattle master just stayed put. An interesting choice. But yeah, these are all light mechs that they've got here. And some of them are very light. They've got a Stinger. They've got a Cattle Master. They've got an Irby. Like, the Irby is a halfway decent mech. If you use it correctly. This is kind of not the right situation for an urban mech. But the Jenner is pretty much a straight up good mech. Although I don't really like running mind dispensers on it. But the rest of their mechs, not so much. What are they considering right now? They've been thinking for a long time. This is the phase 16. This is Bessie. Okay. But Bessie already moved. Bessie just stayed put and, like, braced. Did the game bug? I think the game may have bugged. I mean, we can't save the game in mission in Rogue Tech and reload it to see if we can reinitialize it. We may end up having to scrub this episode. And by that, I mean just Alt F4 the game and relaunch it. Which would suck. In that case, I'd probably just restart the episode. I'm going to give it another 30 seconds, and I'll restart the episode if it doesn't figure out what it's doing from there. Anything? Anything at all. No? And now I'm kind of rethinking restarting the episode. Maybe we just cruise through this, but leave this in? And cruise back to this same position, and then just let the episode go long? Okay, um, I, I think it's clear at this point that we gotta alt F for it. So, yeah, I'm. the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking, let's just leave it. We'll see how long it takes to relaunch Rogue Tech. Hopefully not too long. And, uh, with any luck, we'll be able to just cruise right on through. And, I mean, maybe it'll generate more difficult enemies. That would be, <laughs> that would be an interesting thing. Let me shift it over to my other monitor here. It, Rogue Tech always launches on the wrong monitor, and I don't know why. Actually, Rogue Tech does a save right before you launch, doesn't it? Automatically? I think it auto-saves. So I think we'll be ready to launch. 
At least I hope so. Mod tech always takes a little bit to run. There's no doubt about that. But, I mean, we can always let this episode go a little bit long, if necessary. Like, honestly, that wasn't a particularly interesting mission, but... Maybe it'll generate differently this time and be a little more interesting. That would be nice. And hopefully not bug out this time. Maybe restarting it will fix the capture FPS as well. Can be fingers crossed on that one. That seems to be worst when you launch the mission, though, and just smooth out as you go along, I was noticing. Okay, let's get into that career. Continue from the latest save. Hopefully it was the save after we got through the financial report and right before we deployed. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now this load can often take a little while as well. I wouldn't blame you if you skipped ahead a little bit. That would uh, maybe be for the best. This, this particular load I've found usually takes a minute or two. But honestly, loading up Rotec didn't take as long as I was ho or as long as I was fearing it would. Probably because it was just loaded up, is my guess. Yeah, repair costs of armor does indeed vary depending on type and mech tech level. That is true. Only you can prevent friendly fire. Well, that's not true. Enemies can friendly fire too. Am I just going to... Before you seek revenge with someone, be sure and dig two graves. Fair enough. I'm just going to read these loading screen tips. I actually love the loading screen tips from, uh, from Rogue Tech. They're, they're pretty cool. A lot of them are pretty funny. Like the one about the Steiner Scout Lance. I'm a fan. Okay, here we go, I think. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> oh boy. Well, if you uh, haven't yet, you can always skip ahead until the YouTube preview shows that there is actual things happening. There we go. That, that was perfect. And yeah, it looks like this is indeed when we deployed. So let's just deploy out over here as quick as we can. We left it straight down the middle. As far as mechs go, this is actually exactly the loadout that we had that did indeed save. So let's just deploy this. Let's get in there. We'll see if it generates different enemies or not. And hopefully it doesn't freak out on Bessie again. If it does, I think we're going to have to wait for a patch, which means something. Or we could do a different mission, I suppose, but I kind of want to do this one regardless. But I think it'll generate differently. I believe Rogue Tech regenerates the mission when you're loading it in each time, and I think it'll generate a completely different mission. Well, it'll be possibly possibly on the same map. Maybe. But this is a rather large amount of loading. Obviously, I usually cut out the loading of Rogue Tech itself and the loading of the save game, but uh, that wasn't exactly an option for this episode. So uh, <laughs> I guess hopefully this loads up relatively quickly. We've already done this briefing, so there's absolutely no point in doing that again. Okay, here we are. Same map. Command interface initiated. Yeah, this is the same map. Isn't it? Yeah, this is. But we landed over here previously, so this is a different landing zone. We're still going to head up over here and make contact in the same way. It does seem to be recording at a solid 60 FPS right now. Yeah. Restarting the game seems to have fixed that issue. Okay. Whose turn is it? It's our Spectre's turn. Okay, that is a weapons carrier. Large laser. Okay, so that's definitely different enemies. We're just going to brace here. No point in taking that shot. 
We've got a wasp over there. Firing on our specter. That's fine. Standing by. The assassin is going to make his way up over to here. Now, I am going to actually toggle the ECM on. That is something I didn't do yet last time, but I probably should have. We're just going to position the assassin up here. And we can now see their full lance. They have a blackjack, an Azula 2, a weapons carrier, as previously stated, and a wasp. We'll tag the wasp. We did succeed in tagging the wasp. We did not do any damage, I don't think. Actually, I think we did hit that last one. Yep. The Clint can go ahead and sprint up to here. Actually, yeah, this is fine. We're going to stay on long-range targeting. There's no point in firing with those hit odds, so. The trebuchet will step up. Heading out. And I want to hit that wasp as hard as we can. That was really hard, actually. Okay, that is a dead wasp already. I was not expecting that, but we'll take it. The panther can move up to here, and we're just going to do some fire support. That is really low odds, but we'll take them. No point in not. Not surprised that we missed. Noted. What is that, an ultra auto cannon? Probably a 5 or 10? Okay. We're going to move up with the Centurion. That does mean that this main battle tank does, in fact, become a target. Okay. Some damage to it there. Oh, yeah, we have allies. <laughs> They're probably not going to do much, though. This is more threatening. Like, this is a better role for us to get in terms of enemies. So I'm okay with that. That's a lot of hits on the assassin, considering the range and the four evasive pips. But we did intend for the assassin to be bait there. So it's doing its job. Yeah. The Clint is now going to switch to short range targeting. And we are going to move in to this side arc. All right, the question is, do we go for the main battle tank? That is what we have the best hit odds on. And its armor could get pretty shredded here, actually. Attacking from position. Yeah, that was pretty good. Receiving you. The Spectre is going to similarly move up into the same sort of flank. Yeah, I actually really like this positioning, other than stray shots. Okay. Some damage to the MBT there. Now we could move in and charge the blackjack, or we could simply walk in and hit the MBT again. Here it comes. Or miss the MBT. That works too, I suppose. Aye, aye. We'll have the assassin close in over... Actually, yeah, we would need to jump, wouldn't we? Or run over this way. Yeah, I'd prefer this. That. And we'll just look to tag the blackjack. Copy that. We did not succeed, but that's okay. Negative damage. Repeat. Negative damage. Okay. Next, the panther will move up and also look to hit that MBT. It's taking a lot of damage. That's got a heavy rifle on it. Okay. That's a structure exposure. Sensor basic destroyed. MG array crit. And that's only 4 HP in that front section. Let's finish it. We only need one missile to land in that front. Crew compartment crit. Take this. And it didn't die? That was 4 internal damage. It had 4 HP. Is it at 0 HP? I think it's at 0 HP. Yeah, you shouldn't have had that much armor loss. Unless... We'll check it in a moment. Try to see what happened there. 
Systems holding. Okay. What happened here? It's at 1 HP. It was at 4, though, and then it got hit for 4. Okay, so good to know that in Rogue Tech, 4 minus 4 equals 1. I'm assuming that is because it was in cover, right? I think that's because it was in cover. Standing by. Regardless, we're going to move up with the Assassin. On the move. And the Assassin is going to look to finish it off. We just need to hit that front section. We did. We managed to tag our own mech, but I guess that's okay. Reporting vehicle destroyed. Minimal damage on that okay. Hit. We're going to bring in Clint, the Clint, and we are going to... Mm, his back is to these rocks. Okay. We're going to have to hit him side arc here. Got it. But that's fine. For physical attack. Minus one initiative. That was a lot of damage, actually, to that blackjack. I'm receiving you. The panther can come in over here and hit him rear arc and still be in cover. Okay, that was a nice hit there, actually. Yeah, it could have been better. We could have had that uh, center torso hit, but we'll just move over with the specter. And we'll see if we can finish him off here. If he's got an XL engine, he does die. I don't believe he does have an XL engine. That vedette moves up and actually fires on the weapons carrier. I'm slightly shocked to see that. The trebuchet is also going to fire on the weapons carrier. That thing doesn't have much armor. So it's actually quite close to dead now. It'll fire on the Spectre and miss. It got close to hitting the Panther, but it did not hit. Yes, Commander. Yeah, the Centurion could, in theory... Just checking to see if we can... Ooh, that's a rear arc right there. Potential for Stray Shot. That's for sure. But I think our hit odds are good enough. He's dead. Excellent. The Cloudbuster moves up, as does the Scorpion and the other Scorpion. Okay. Yes, Commander. The Assassin is going to just sprint through the flames here, and we're going to look we to go. drop a tag on this weapons carrier. We can also fire the handheld flamer if we were in range, but we aren't. Engaging target. Okay, we did manage to tag him. That's good. He will die as we are closing in. Our ranging shots will do the trick. In fact, the Spectre may straight up kill him here. This is strong side, so actually probably not. Okay, he ejected. Let's get out of here. That was still not very threatening, but in terms of salvage, the second go-round was better. So I guess it's a good thing that the bug happened? Kinda? I mean, ultimately, I'd prefer that it didn't, right? We could have potentially gotten a second mission deployment out of that one in time. If the bug hadn't have happened, but uh, it did, and there's not anything we can do about that now. I really do want these main battle tank parts. But I also want the blackjack part. But I think the main battle tank is actually more important right now. We'll roulette everything else. We did not get the third Izula part. Sad. Anyway, we definitely want to get more of those because we want vehicles. In terms of repairs, we did take a few solid hits. I expect that it'll cost us perhaps... Perhaps 20,000 to repair this. And five days. I wonder how accurate that is. Well, we're about to find out. Hmm. 13,000 in three days. Well, I'm glad whenever it comes in under my estimate. Do it. 
And with that, it is time to put a cut in here. We definitely, without the bug, would have had time for a second deployment. And we could have gotten one of these, uh, one of these done. That said, that does mean that we can probably get both of these done next episode. And then maybe tackle this one. That one's going to be interesting. For now, though, it is time to put that cut in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to see if we can get two missions done. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.